All right, welcome to another episode from the Chart Reader. So we're gonna do a mixed bag here. We're gonna look at SoFi, Mullen, and DXYZ. And my goodness, the last time I covered SoFi, it really was all about the 702 line. And yeah, I think it still has to be. Look at this thing. One, two, three, four, five, six bounces on that support line. Monstrous, monstrous, monstrous strength on that line. I personally am surprised it's holding up this long, but I think with earnings only a couple days away, I think it's probably gonna either hold till earnings and, and you know, kind of let that be the big factor. So that's, that's my main thought there. Mullen, look, Mullen was a big day today. It really was. And once again, we find ourselves, let me just flash it real quick. We find ourselves testing that eight in the 20, okay? That has been and continues to be the big, big story on Mullen. We've had a decent couple little moments over it, but for the most part, right, we've been well under those lines, right? So that's going to be the story there. And then DXYZ. So this is gonna be a twofold. One, I'm gonna do the analysis of this like I normally do. And then I'm gonna talk about trading, you know, newer, ooh, excuse me, sorry about that, newer IPOs, right? Obviously this has been around for a bit, what, like two weeks now? Wow, <laughs> there was some bad counting. It's actually been a little more than a month by now. But um, yeah, I'll talk about what happens when we don't have that many indicators, right? We only have two moving averages. There is no MACD. We just got the RSI, right? So. Um, yeah, there's there's a little bit of a mixed bag on what we'll do with that one, okay? But before we go any further and I give you more of my thoughts and opinions, what are we going to do? Same thing we always do, right? We'll take a look at the daily and the weekly to see how these things are setting up short term. We have our five moving averages. There are horizontal support and resistance lines that I do draw manually myself. And then when we are done up here, we'll use the MACD, RSI, and volume as our lower indicators. Hey, really quickly, if you can please subscribe to this channel, share this video online with your friends, comment good or bad if you disagree. Look, anything you can do helps so, so much with these YouTube algorithms, but for real, just being here and giving me your time, oh, I am so, so grateful for it all, all right? So let's get into SoFi, and really, SoFi is probably going to be more about the upcoming earnings than it really is the technicals that we're looking at right now, okay? Okay, so um, I believe, sorry, I was just looking at it. Let me get the exact date. So yeah, SoFi earnings is on the 29th. So that's Monday, all right? And it looks like it's before market. Personally, I'm a fan of earnings before market instead of after hours. I feel like you get to see the reaction immediately, right? There's no after hours, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. No, no, no. You get the live drop, you get live hours right after it, you get to see an immediate reaction, and, and that's really what I prefer, all right? Um, looking at the technicals, this is basically my twofold, like, what would I call this? I don't want to use the word like caution, right? But this is this this really is what I what I feel before I get into the technicals. Okay, we are a couple days from Friday. Okay, so I normally assume Friday is a loser day. That's just kind of what I always do. All right. So really, there's only one maybe real trading day before we basically get earnings, right? Because I'm, I'm I'm essentially saying Thursday's the only day. Friday doesn't count. Monday before the, the market bell, we're going to get the earnings, right? I really think we're going to get one of, t I guess really one of three things. And it's kind of almost obvious it's these three things, but it, it, it's earnings is so close that it's really hard for me to make a real educated assumption, all right? But my best guess actually would be two more dojis. All right. If, if you look at today's candle, this is a very textbook doji, right? You can see in the box over there, we open at 761. We close at 760, literally a penny difference in a seven hour trading day. But we get as high as almost the 50. We get as low as almost the 20. I mean, that's an uncertain doji, right? I think at this point, people are pretty much waiting to see what the Monday realities are. Okay. Maybe maybe there's a shot at us coming to this. Oh, it's a little higher. Where are you? You're right there. Maybe we hit a good slot machine and maybe we can get like 777, all right? I, I, I can believe $7.77 
hits, I really don't see us getting over those two lines. I think it's going to be very, very difficult to get over 810 to 815, give or take. It's all about Monday. Okay, Monday's earning reaction is going to be the, the, the telling factor, all right? Um, we will either, if I had to take a guess, we will either fly to this 923 or we will die and we will come down to this 650, if not lower. That's, that's my best guess because generally you kind of go up a bunch or down a bunch. You rarely stay, you know, relatively flat after earnings, especially when you're talking about a, you know, a prove me stock, right? Like SoFi is a bigger name for sure. They're, they're definitely not a small penny stock by any means, but I still see SoFi as a prove me stock. Like I, I, I still... I still find it, okay, let me let me actually talk a little bit fundamental real quick, all right? You normally don't do this, and believe me, fundamental is not my game. I really don't believe that SoFi is going to become the bank of the millennials, or the bank, I, shoot, I think millennials is like too old, right? The bank of like whatever generation is like a kid right now. I, I really think the technology factor helped SoFi when it IPO'd. When was that? That was a while ago, right? It was, oh my gosh, it wasn't even that long ago. But like, yeah, I think early, not even 20, like, no, I, I actually take it like, let me just say my thoughts, okay? I think the technology slash bank play, it, it, it worked for a moment, right? When I think of a Bank of America, a Wells Fargo, um, even like one of my regional banks on, on, on this side, right? Like, I don't really think tech, I, you know, they all have an app and stuff, but that's kind of it, right? I really, really am not sure if the bigger names are just going to, you know, bend over and let SoFi take this, like, we are the tech bank kind of route. I think that it's going to very, very much catch up. I also think that they're going to be able to do, like, better money things, in my opinion. But again, that's, that's a lot more, you know, opinion-based than fact-based, right? But SoFi. I, I still see this as a prove it to me stock. And because of that, that was the point of that little fundamental tangent. I do think we're gonna see a big move and that that's what was driving the nine plus or the 650 worse kind of up and down, okay? Do I know what the earnings is gonna do? No, not at all, right? I think there's two factors that we're gonna be looking for. Number one was the positive, um, the positive, what was it? Net, I imagine. Maybe it was gross. I don't really know, but it was the first positive income that they that they gave on the last earnings. Problem was the OPEX to make that positive number was ridiculous. They basically spent five dollars to make one positive dollar, right? And and that's that's not math that works, right? Now you can spin it as hey, I'm building for the future, that's why I'm taking the loss now. Blah blah blah. We've all heard Amazon do it and other people copy it, right? But to me, I think number one, what does that look like a quarter from from here, right? You you made one positive, but you had to spend five to do it. Can you do better than that? That's going to be, I think, my first question. I think from there, it's going to be whatever guidance they can give. If you can make me believe good things are about to come, hey, that might help offset things, right? Let's just quickly talk about the Tesla earnings. I'm not going to look at the chart, right? But Tesla popped on really bad numbers. And the reason Tesla popped on really bad numbers was interesting guidance. They promised low car cost. They promised, you know, auto driving partnerships. They made it seem like, hey, there's potential in the future. That's what guidance means, right? People will ignore the bad of today if you make them believe tomorrow looks better. That is what the stock market is, right? We're, we're betting on the stock's future and a company's future, right? So um, that's kind of my... I'm not an earnings expert anymore. I was at one point, but I, I don't even play them anymore. Personally, that's what I would do. I would hold nothing, all right? I would not hold a single share come Friday. I actually have no holding in SoFi. Um, if I did, I would sell. I would see what the earnings looks like, and I would either trade the uptrend and watch it go, or I would avoid the downtrend avalanche, all right? So just my thoughts and opinions. Let me know what you think earnings are going to be. Let me know what you're looking forward to. Let me know if you knew what last quarter's guidance was 
because that's what we're expecting to have happen on this one, right? So um, last thing I'll say, because again, like I said, I don't think the technicals matter. Look, I'm ignoring these two divergences. Normally, you know I love seeing green over red, green over red on both. I'm ignoring those. I am. I think my problem is volume, all right? We still can't really crack this 50-day line, but earnings will fix that. Earnings on that single earnings Monday is going to come to, if I had to guess, maybe 75 million shares, if not higher. And hopefully they're buying because if they're selling, oh, no, no, no. All right. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your opinions. Even if you disagree, let's come into Mullen. All right. Beautiful day today. Beautiful, beautiful day. I hope you made some real good money. All right. You know, I'm not here to hate on any specific stock. But this is a scary chart to look at, all right? So, um, you know I'm not here to be a fanboy. You know, I'm, 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 I do my best to be impartial because trust me, I've lost so much money with fanboys and fangirls telling me it's all good, it's all good, when clearly it's not, all right? So, real quick, if you can please subscribe, if you can share this video, it does wonders with the algorithms, all right? So, Mullen, big day today. There was some news I saw. So the news I believe was they hit a battery milestone. I think that's that's the, um, the, the theme of a couple of headlines I saw. My honest thought to that is twofold, okay? Number one, that's not new news, okay? Look, I have no problem with celebrating accomplishments, right? Like PR is PR. PR brings attention. Attention is volume. Clearly, today was a big volume day. That was driven on that news, right? 12 million shares when we're used to being all the way down here under a million, right? So a big more than 10x spike today. So again, my problem is it's not new news. So I think it's hard to believe that this is going to sustain right like believe me i'm 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 sure a lot of people are hopeful that the next milestone is going to get accomplished but hey that's probably going to be a while from now right and you know when you don't have much pr especially if you've 10x volume and then you kind of have nothing juicy coming the day after oh man that's what a pump and dump looks like right this very 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 much is about volume okay the minimum volume I'm willing to accept is 9 million because even 9 million is what? Three, six, nine, twelve is 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 a big twenty five percent drop, right? So if I'm looking for nine million shares in a seven hour trading day, we better have one point two million in that first hour. Hopefully, a little closer to like three million by that second hour, right? That's what I would really, really love. But we need volume to hold. If we're under nine million shares, I think it's going to be really easy for this to fall to three thirty maybe as low as like 315, give or take, okay? Why am I saying that? Just look at this thing, right? Let's just, I'm gonna zoom in real quick, but this has been happening since February of last year, okay? All we do is stay under this, this orange line, okay? We're basically just staying under the eight moving average, but every now and then a stock has to cool up, okay? So what does that mean? Look at this thing. This has a really low RSI. This RSI is at 11. It needs to come up to the 50s just for it to come back down to the 18s. It needs to come back up to the 50s just for it to come back down to the 13s. It needs to come back up to the 50s just for it to come back down to the 6s, right? Look at this thing. This RSI is a 6.5, my goodness, right? I, I All I'm seeing is a cool up before it continues the downtrend down, right? So I, I I need more to believe. I do. And again, I think my problem is I don't think this was enough news. Yeah, that's beautiful divergence. Yeah, that's a little bit of divergence right there too. I see it, right? Yeah, we're not that far from the zero line, right? But we've seen these things happen before. We've seen the pump and dump come on Mullen and I, I'm just not buying it, all right? I think the other really important thing to remember is the NASDAQ, all right? NASDAQ is trying, 
All right, I'm glad we're over the eight moving average, I am. But I don't know, right? I'm showing more of the S&P 500, but really this is kind of the same thoughts, right? I really thought we were gonna go down, we were gonna make our way up and then come back down. That's my that's my assumption of the S&P 500. Really is the same for, for NASDAQ, right? We came to this blue 100 moving average. I think we're gonna come up a little bit. I don't think we're gonna get over that same two line cluster and then I think we're gonna come back down, right? So maybe if, if, if NASDAQ can keep going up, maybe Mullen can kind of piggyback that, but I think the news isn't gonna hold and that's my concern. And yeah, if volume isn't there, oh man. If good things happen, I think my next target would be 480 and then after 480, it would be 530, okay? I think it's very, 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 very difficult to get over 530. Just look at this red line. We have literally never been over that line for more than a year. So I think 530 is the very, very max you can think. I think 480 is a good possibility. Yeah, 475, 480, whatever. I think that's a good possibility if this thing continues up. Again, 430 is kind of my come down number, all right? Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your opinions. I don't think we need to look at the weekly because again, I think this is very much day to day. The last thing I want is this to lose 280 because then, you know, we're just going back down all time lows, okay? So one more time, let me know your thoughts, even if you disagree, D, X, Y, Z. Okay, this is an interesting stock right here. This is a really interesting stock. And like I said in the beginning of the video, I think this is gonna be an interesting um, video here, okay? So there are a couple things I'm gonna do here. Number one, I'm gonna talk a little bit fundamental because this is an interesting little ticker we got right here, this ETF. Number two, we're gonna talk about what trading an IPO looks like, okay? Um, you can see it, right? We literally only have two of the five lines. One of them just formed two days ago. We have no MAC, <clears throat> excuse me, we have no MACD, no RSI, or sorry, just a, a newly formed RSI. This is, this is it, it's, it, it's new stuff, very little info, okay? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, I need water. Hold on. Let me pause this. Sorry. Oh man. Sorry about that. Okay. So let's talk about this ETF. So this ETF actually has a number of holdings of some pretty big private companies. I really, you know what? Give me a sec. Let me pause one more time. Let me pull some info up and then we'll have a visual here. One second. Okay. Cool. So I did a little quick Googling. Looks like there's actually a, a real clean website dedicated to this actual ETF. So um, we are looking at the current portfolio. Again, every ETF, every ETF is required to, to just show you what they're holding. Okay. So little quick Google search. I think this was maybe the third article. So the big names that I remember seeing were obviously SpaceX with a substantial substantial, substantial main holding, okay? Um, from there, I know Epic Games. I for sure have heard of Super Superhuman and OpenAI, and then Stripe, Instacart's another one, right? So they've got some real interesting names right here, right? Look, Discord, I always put my Discord thing on and, and so blah, 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 right? But there are, there are all these holdings. They still have about 10% cash on them. SpaceX was the loudest of that. And I think that's really what helped make that initial thing pop, right? So in a lot of ways, listen, you know I am not a long-term holder, okay? I am 100% short-term. I hold stocks between days and weeks, right? That's why I look at the daily and the weekly. This is an interesting one to consider, okay? Because hey, if you're gonna get a 20 buck, you know, holding per share on something that's very, very heavy on SpaceX, very, very heavy on a bunch of really big names, you know, open AI, they're really into AI and this and that, another space thing, blah, 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 right? Like I would do my research on what these all do and I'm sure it's just a click away of finding out more about these companies, right? But you know, it's an interesting thing. It really is, right? To me, believe me, there's a piece of me in my head that feels like, hey, there's a real shot that this thing loses 12 bucks, falls down all time lows, and hey, this 26 price isn't a steal, right? So again, it's really, really easy to just make a 
blanket claim that this is a great price. And hey, I'm gonna say it again, it might be, right? I have no ability to buy a single share of SpaceX, right? Maybe if I work there, they would do something. I do not work there, I can tell you that. But um, hey, maybe it's an interesting way to give yourself a position on SpaceX without you know any other ability to do it, right? To me, I'm a lines person, right? Like we live and die by these lines. We live and die by these colorful lines down here too. And, and to me, there's a couple things I'm not liking, all right? so. Um, I am now going to quickly shift into some IPO comments and then I'll get into this technicals really quickly. But I know a lot of traders that I consider better than me that will not trade IPOs until I think the 26th day. I think you need 26 days for this MACD to show. I think you need the bigger of those two numbers before you get the tick, before you get the info. When you get that 26 day, you also have a little bit more of the 20. Because look, this right here is the 20th candle. I'm not going to count all of these, but look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On the eighth candle, we get the eight moving average, right? This is only day 21. All right, so this is still missing a lot of info. We just got the red line on the RSI, right? It forms on the 14th day. After five candles, you now get that five average, right? The five average of the last, right? So, um, you know, there's still a lot of missing data. That said, look, there were easy ways to kind of play this technically sound, right? So a um, couple things I'm going to do. I'm going to draw that right there. Okay. I'm going to draw this right here. Okay. So this, okay. Clearly this was the first day of trading. All right. And if you're going to open a lot higher than you close, that's always a positive thing. Okay. From there, we clearly do this little horizontal, right? It was only a couple days, but yeah, we couldn't quite continue. We go horizontal. Once we were able to get over the biggest candle to the left, this guy, it made a lot of sense that we just went, 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 right? I never want to see a candle eat the entire day before. That's always a really scary thing to me. I always say maintain at least 50%, let alone lose the whole thing, right? So from there, it does make sense that we came down to the eight moving average and now formed and you know it's the first real thing. That's a bad candle, okay? And it's interesting because I don't know, and it's hindsight's 2020, right? So I don't know if I'm giving myself any real like thoughts here, but this day does close under the eight, and then that could have looked like confirmation. I am a little surprised that it didn't continue on down. I think this ends up being a really interesting support, given that it is one of really three or four real candles over this thing, right? And then those two bad ones. But um, yeah, we actually get a decent support from this 25, all right? Right now, I think there are two things I'm looking for. This is either gonna fall below this 2508, or it needs to get above this 39, uh, 38. Because if you're looking at the box over there, 3790 is, is this orange line right here, right? So. I'll set an alert at 38. I think knowing 38 hit would be really interesting here. Because, yeah, if we break 38, I think there's a real shot at 51. I think over 51 might be a little greedy. But, yeah, I mean, you're at 38. You are over all the moving averages and ready to fly. There's only two instead of five, right? Um, if we lose this 25... Green, 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 green might actually be a fast red, 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 and I can see us coming to 17 quickly, all right? So I would wait for the move to happen instead of actually being you know, a holder right now, okay? We're under the eight moving average. We've been under the eight for a while. It's just been a lot of doji, so it hasn't been like a crazy, crazy loss, but we're now also under the eight and the 20, and you know I never like that, right? So again, this is an interesting one. I personally, and clearly I've said it a bunch, it's an alert, I would wait to get over this line, because yeah, this is a fast channel right here from 25 to 12. I think 17, like I said, 1750, whatever, is a decent low end target, right? Let me know your thoughts, let me know your opinions, even if you disagree, hey, I appreciate you so, so much.